Hey everyone, Ivy League Gaming here, and today we're playing Raid Shadow Legends, and I'm joined by the one and only Ash. I, I was actually really excited when he messaged me the other day. Um, he's been a longtime favorite of mine, so thank you, Ash, for joining me. Ivy, it is a pleasure to be here. I, I just, I'm, I'm so embarrassed to say I discovered your channel kind of recently, and uh, yeah, watched a bunch of your content, and I was like, I really like her. Uh, so yeah, reached out to see if you want to do a collaboration, and here we are. So thanks for having me. And how long have you been playing? Uh, really about me, two right? years. Yeah, I, I started uh, right after the uh, the Sir Nick fusion. So probably about two years, maybe a little bit over two years ago. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I think Around I, the same you, time? you were creating. Yeah, I think so. And you created content right away, didn't you? Kind of right away. I, it was 2019, but I'm not sure. Okay. I wasn't as early as some of the OG OG. Like, I think that Chosen and a few others were uh, Cold Brew, and those guys were uploading when I started. But, yeah, it's been a, a really fun and, and wild ride, and it's a, it's a really fun game. It can be frustrating at times as well, but overall, uh, you know, really enjoy it. Really enjoy the community. Yeah, it's the best thing about it. Um, I'll make sure yeah. I have all of his links below, guys. I'm sure you're already following, but in case you're not, make sure you do. Lots of great energy, which I think is important uh, when it can be on content creator. Thank and you. why everyone like I'm sure that's a big reason why everybody loves you like they do. Um, okay, enough, yeah. enough to talk about me. Yeah. I think get to the... <laughs> <laughs> so um, today Thank we're you. actually going to be talking about some game-changing moments and the champions that go along with those uh, that changed our accounts through progression. So yeah. I think I'm you want to start first? Of course, yeah. Okay. So game-changing moments, we defined pretty broadly, right? So like, yeah. you know, something that really just it opened up a new aspect of the game for mm -hmm. us. At least that's how I defined it. Yes. So for me, I'm going to start with building a second cold heart. So building my first Cold Heart was amazing, and she was incredible, and she did a lot of damage. But then I got lucky enough, probably, you know, semi-early on. It took me a few months to get lucky enough to pull two Cold Hearts. But eventually, you know, doing enough double-time Void events, I eventually pulled enough rares to have a deep Cold Heart. And I built her, and not just Spider, which everybody thinks about, okay, Spider, awesome. You have two Cold Hearts, you know, DPS down Spider 20, which I did, and which was, you know, very beneficial for me, especially in feed, uh, speed farming silver and, and accessories but also fire knight she got me to clear you know fire knight 20 at the time pretty much with ease with that four time hitter on the a1 plus the uh, full turn meter reduction on the a3 so she really opened up and allowed me to clear two level 20 dungeons building a second cold heart so that was a huge uh, moment for me on my account yeah i agree i i have two cold hearts as well um still using both pretty regularly honestly yeah. even through the end game and if you can do that early on that would be so helpful of course you can yeah. use your doom tower too and i think a lot of people use her with scarab king if you don't do the solo builds but great champion you can put her in destroy for scarab king yep yeah i have one in destroy and one just you know normal cold heart build but i use them both still obviously on spider and uh like i think i only use one now i use her with the lure on fire knight on fire knight 25 but for a while it was uh two cold hearts so yeah that was it was just you know I think I sat on that second cold heart for a while too before I built her. Just like, ah, should I really? Because I hadn't built a dupe ever at that point in my my raid career, you know. And it's then true. I'm like, all right, let's let's do it. And then I did it. I did not regret it. <laughs> definitely, definitely worth the dupe. I always feel guilty when I eat extra cold hearts at this point. I've like I have right? like three or four in the vault. Is that that's enough? I'm never gonna need that many, am I? <laughs> <laughs> well, you might need uh, like eight to power up both of them on the dupe system. Who knows? So you uh, never you never know there, right? <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could so. do that with the rares. All right, we'll see. Well, yeah, now, right? It's it's Lego only, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Bummer. unfortunately. All right, you're up next. We got. I think I'm going to start with um a really big game changing moment that's worth the grind, and that's progress missions getting Arbiter. Now I already have her, so Romantu is my next thing. But getting Arbiter was just so huge for my account. I mean, every, oops, why did I just click that? <laughs> she is just great, great for Arena, of course. Her she's kind of the Arena. Or a queen over here, and she has the turn meter increase, and she's just such a good champion. She has double turn meter increase, two ways of doing it, so still see her constantly. I know some people, I'm actually surprised at how much she's, I want to say, falling out of the meta for Platinum lately, but people are coming up with other creative comps, but man, getting her is, it's worth the grind to just push hard through those progress missions and get Arbiter as fast as you can. 
Yeah, she might be falling off a little bit of favor in Platinum, but, uh, you know, with Kaimar and speed leads and different mm-hmm. variety of speed leads on those teams. However, I still feel like 95% of people who have Cold Heart, I mean, uh, Armor, uh, Arbiter, wow, I'm thinking last video, this video combined, uh, have Arbiter use her, right? Like, she is the queen of, of just great hall development in the arena because she's so fast and such a good speed lead, so... Uh, I agree with you. What a great uh, champion to spotlight there in terms of somebody opening up your game. Did you use her a lot outside of the arena, like even early on? Yeah, I think I used to use Gorgorab. He was kind of my baby arbiter until I got her in a lot of areas. And I think she kind of replaced him in some dungeons for a while for me until I got other champions that I'll mention next. (laughs) Cool, 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 cool. Uh, Well, good choice. Uh, I will go with, I have a Lego and an Epic. Who should I go with? You tell me. The Lego. Okay. So I'm sure that everybody who's been lucky enough to pull this insanely stupid overpowered champion probably feels the same way that I do. But Chris the Ageless, he was the, the one champion that I, that I pulled, that I built, put on my teams, and I was just like, oh, my word. Like the content that used to be very difficult for me or that I could not surpass was easy with him. You know, he does it all. He has provoke. He has buff extension. He has increased speed, continuous heal on himself, ally protect, decrease speed, a shield at the beginning of every single turn. Uh, what did I forget? I feel like he, he does everything yeah, in this game. Crazy. He does it incredibly well. And I just remember Faction Wars, Lizard Men, I was really struggling with when I was lucky enough to pull Chris. And I think I was, I don't know, maybe stage like 14 or something like that. And then I pulled him and I cleared all the way stage 21. That's it. It was just Krisk. So just building one champion got me that much progress in Faction Wars, let alone everywhere else in the game. He's my main tank for a clan boss. Uh, Yeah, I mean, anytime that I'm in trouble, (laughs) I just call on Krisk because anywhere, even the arena building him in a shield set to have the double shield starting out every uh, every round, every turn uh, is is really incredible as well. So, yeah, Chris the Ageless, an absolute game changer for me. He's my number one wanted void, probably still. (laughs) I hope that you get him someday Uh, and experience the the amazingness that is Krisk. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, you gotta wait for those. Have they done a ten time event with uh with Chris before? I th- I feel like I don't, maybe. I don't know. I, I'm not very bad at saving my shards because they get you, and I just want to pull everything. I can't help it. Oh, you pull them all immediately? <laughs> no, not immediately. But I mean, every okay. time there's an event, I'm pulling something. Okay, it's okay, like, okay. Their okay. events are good, and they get you. Like I, I can't yes. help it. I'm so I'm. I, I would not. Event. Yeah, I don't want to give the wrong impression. I'm not a big fan of ten times events. I usually pass on them. However, if there was For a Chris one, I would yeah. go with it. I would go with a Chris. I would go with it. Uh, so yeah, that was my second, uh, you know, game changing yeah, moment. Definitely one. Ugh, I want someday, maybe for me. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go with my next moment. Was way before I started streaming. Um, I was sitting on my couch pulling shards. I had a. I got a lucky string of every time I bought one specific pack. Great things happened, and this was my. First, actually, my first great thing in this moment was this fella here. So I, I pulled a okay. warlord. I was I was two times void. I had thirty shards. That's it. I pulled warlord and was like, holy crap! Oh my gosh! And yep. then, and then two shards later, I pulled a damn siffy. And I, I, I might have cried a little bit. I might have cried. Dude, a <laughs> so you pulled the warlord, and then in five shard, in four shards, you pulled the siffy and a warlord. And, yeah. yeah, and then I, I think, well, I think I pulled like ten shards and got Warlord, and then a couple shards later I got Siffy and was like, "What the hell?" And then I put my phone down. I'm like, I, "This is all the luck. I, there's no reason to pull anymore, right?" I'm like, "But, but no, it's a two times, right? I got, I have some shards <laughs> left. It's a yeah. two times event. Well, I'm just gonna pull them the next two times event. I might as well pull them now." And then I got this guy. What? In the same damn day. <laughs> I thought that was the whole story. You got Siffy and Warlord. So you got Siffy, Warlord, In the and Hegemon. Same day, dude. Who'd you pay off at Plarium, Ivy? Who'd you pay? I mean, this is insane. Right? I'm going to get lots of people hating me in my comments for this one, but that I is did not really have... insane. It took me a long time to have void shard pull luck after this. It was like a solid year <laughs> of nothing, but it was fair. Right? I, got... I, was... I couldn't blame them. <laughs> Wow. Talk about making you like the most insane arena team. Well, a yeah. most in- uh, insane team in a lot of different areas, right? Right mm-hmm. out the gate, huh? Wow. Well, congrats. <laughs> Who's your favorite? Who do you use the most out of the three? Siffy. Yeah. 
Yeah. Who do you use the more in the arena? Do you use Hegemon on all your teams, or do you use Warlord um, on all your teams? I only or like, use yeah. Hegemon and Warlord in defense to scare people away because people just avoid. Um, okay. And but I I use Siffy as my main Siffy Arbiter, Madam Sarah's Trunda as my main arena. But okay. of course in three v three I use them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, I'm very jealous of Hegemon. He's my most wanted. I'll trade you a Crisk for a Hegemon. <laughs> Actually, wouldn't make that trade. Forget it. I take no, it back. I wouldn't make that trade. <laughs> uh, okay. So I have one more for you. It's a little little fella, a little dwarf, and he goes by the name of Rockbreaker. So I oh. was. I haven't been super frustrated in this game that often. Uh, you know, sometimes when I get frustrated, I just leave that area of content and I go to uh, another area. You know, like if I'm frustrated in the arena what or the whatever, I'll go work on. Uh, he's an I epic champion. Oh, there he is. I was thinking yeah, you, of, I was thinking have of him. I had yeah. a rare that I was thinking of. Never mind. So he is so good oh, yeah. for Faction Wars. I was so yes. frustrated with Faction Wars. I could not beat Dwarf 21 for the life of me. And I only, I didn't have a Tormund. Uh, I did have a Trunda, but Trunda's not as useful as we would think against the end right. boss because he just kills everybody. He's so, so strong, so hard hitting. Uh, but it wasn't until I built Rockbreaker that I was able to clear uh, Faction Wars Stage 21 of Dwarf uh, because of his passive. His passive has this ability here where he's able to just, like, uh, cut damage in half, I believe it is. Can you click on it? I forgot if it was cut damage oh, in sure. half or total mitigation. Yes. So he has a 50% chance of decreasing the damage inflicted on him by 50%. He also has increased defense on his A1 that, like, boosts up his own defense, uh, which makes him, by the time that you get to... Uh, the boss, the red boss, a lot easier. It keeps him alive, and then he has a provoke on his A2 and a counterattack, which gets him to charge up that A1. So you get extra defense on the A1, and then you get that 50% damage reduction. So when the red box hits him, it might take a few battles because of the RNG, but he's going to be able to stay alive, keep the rest of the team alive around him for taking those really hard hits. Uh, so really, just the rock breaker for me was like, an absolute game changer. It was clear as soon as I built him that I think even at level 50, he could help a lot of players get through faction wars, especially if they don't have Tormund or, you know, any of those super OP legendaries in the dwarf faction. But that was a year and a half ago or so. So mm -hmm. I'm sure there's other options there's out there as well. Now, yeah. yeah in, in the dwarf faction. So there we go. Yeah, My I buddy Rockbreaker. Nice. He's cool. You actually never built him. I, he was one of the people I was on the fence about building for the trying to beat that boss, but I was able to beat it with some other people. But I, I was starting to work on him. He was my next in line if I didn't quite. Super, I super useful. Different. Yeah. Nice. I ran him like him and in Grizzled Jarl and Rear Guard Sergeant. I think that that was like the core of my team. And then I probably have a like, Trunda in there as well. So, yeah, that was my uh, that was a really proud moment when Rockbreaker, you know, took me past yeah. the uh, the finish line of Faction Wars uh, in the Dwarf Crypt. I actually have two more moments. All right. Hmm. So should I just say both? Go for right. it. It's your video. <laughs> I'm just here for the ride. I can't not mention both I can, of these. I can invent a moment. I can invent okay. one. <laughs> Go ahead. So, I mean, this lovely lady that everyone seeks hmm. as well. Uh, I, I was doing Doom Tower with my Siffy and all my Warlord and all the nice people that I have. Yay, fun. I could do it. But was taken on the higher ro rooms, like... 30 minutes to do one Ugh. room. I just, I had nothing, there was nothing I could do to survive and make it fast. So I just let it go. And then I got her and my gosh, like she's just the doom tower queen. She's the dungeon queen. She's so game changing. This ability. I love that she's a support champion, but she's a dang right? damage dealer. She's always thrown in those secret rooms, support champions only. You mean you're like seer? Oh, so seer. <laughs> so the best nuker in the entire game I can use. Oh yeah, exactly. sure. Cool. Easy, yeah. easy clap. Oh, yeah. She's so, so good. I mean, I, I've i wanted her for so long. I actually got her on... So my Seer story is I got her on my alt, which I really didn't play anymore. I was just kind of pulling shards every now and then when, I, when events would come up on what I from what I had. And I got her on my alt that I'm not even playing. I'm like, I don't even have her on my main. So what did I do? <laughs> I went and bought shards, and then I got Seer. There's like this one pack. Every go. time I buy stuff, I get... In the same time I got Seer... Oh, I think I got another good Lego at the same time as well. But... Yeah, getting well. There you go. I agree with you, hundred percent. I could totally co-op that that moment because you're right. Anybody who unlocks Seer, it's like, oh, the game got a lot easier in terms of my time consumption. You know, you hit the nail on the head. And, and with level twenty five dungeons too. Oh yeah. You know, any twenty one through twenty five, they have so much HP. She's doing like a million damage a pop on an AOE attack. So yeah, she's very very effective, very good uh, for the game. I hope they never change her. Right.
<laughs> uh, I guess I'll go with a, a little bit of a cheat for my final moment here. It's my first legendary pull. Uh, Biggin, oh. the, uh, the legendary oh, Oregon tribe uh, damage dealer. I feel like he was a game changer for me because he was, you know, my first shard pulls ever, I pulled Biggin. You know, I think I pulled like 10, awesome. you know, or so. And you didn't realize that at the time. Yeah, I have no idea who he even was or what he did. You know, he didn't understand the game very well. Uh, but just to think back at all the areas that he made so much less cumbersome and frustrating, especially back in the day when, you know, all these good free champions weren't available to us. Uh, big in, I can only imagine how much more frustrating the game would have been in the early game had I not had the big fella. So uh, I will go with Biggin, my first legendary pull ever, because he does it all. He's got turn meter on his A3. He's got ac decreased accuracy or stun on his A2, and then an AoE chance on the A1 as well. Uh, very, very good champion. Nice. I ha I have him. I got him not too long ago, but I he's one I still haven't built. I'm so I'm slacking on the big and I gotta get him. Yeah, going. <laughs> build big and he's so much fun. You can use him really in a lot of different areas, but even in the arena as a nuker, you have a lot of fun with him as well. I really need my my Ogren tribe suck for faction wars. It's really slow, and so I need yep. to get him going for that anyway. Yeah, perfect. He'll help you out a lot. All right, you uh, have one more moment. Yeah. Wait, no. What am I doing? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go here because it kind of ties in. I'm okay. gonna go here. So, getting not one. Where is he? Are they in my vault? They're in my vault. Aren't they? <laughs> oh no, they're here. They're here. All right. Okay, I'm there we flying go. Flying by them. You know how sometimes you just watch people on Twitch and stuff, and they keep scrolling by the person a hundred times, like they're right there, they're right there, they're right there. Yeah, Do yeah, that yeah, all the yeah, time. yeah. <laughs> it's worse anyway. when, you're, when you're trying to record a YouTube video, and it's just like, you're like, where is it? You're like okay, like, like this guy, like, like man eater, and you're like, like where. where? Uh, do I have to edit this? I was in really Ogren Tribe, this? and yeah. I was like, why did I just go to Skinwalkers? Yeah. Man Eater, <laughs> that's a good choice as well. Oh, man. So I, I've, I've been having traditional clan boss teams for so long, um, and it was kind of to the point where I, mean, I, I eventually got Valkyrie, and sure, it was good, but it, it, wasn't, it wasn't that easy to set up. It took a little bit of time. And just having... I, when I, so when 10 times Man Eater happened, I made sure I got him. I bought my signature pack that I always buy when there's void events that I have good luck on. And I pulled two man eaters in the same day and I was able to, um, yeah. And cardio. What two is this voodoo you have on this, on it's this perfect that one pack? Special what is this void pack? pack? It likes me. I don't know. What is it? it Are you going to tell us all about it? Or are you going to, no, I just, I don't know. Every single time I buy that $70 special void pack that has like 13 okay. shards or I just, I don't even know. It, it's like what's in it anymore. It was mm. it was seventy dollars at the point used to be for me. It was less recently because I didn't spend much. But for some <laughs> reason, I just always had good luck on that pack. So I just that'd be like the one pack I would buy. And, oh my yeah. god! Well, hey, it's you can't insane. argue with those results. I would say you're so superstitious, but then again, you're <laughs> the one with Hegemon, uh, Sifi, and Warlord in double man eater off the pack. So fair, fair point. Just building uh, the bad eater, I guess, is the whole moment as a whole. Getting these champions, getting a bad eater, quick quality, like the quality of life improvement for just being able to click a dang button now with the AI tuning. It's so nice, and I wouldn't... The only thing I would probably do differently would if I get Demitha, I would build that team instead for a more solid one key, but that's it. I, I like yeah. it. I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, I can't go wrong. And he's and many is like a really good champion outside of that, too, as a support, yeah. like progression champion, you know? Uh, turn meter, decrease attack on AoE on his A1. Really, really solid champion. So, yeah, big, big fan. And uh, congrats on all your lucky pulls <laughs> off of your I magic know, pack. I, I've been yeah. pretty lucky with voids. Voids are my friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. Next time there's a void shard opening, I'll, I know who's going to pull my shards. All right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, those are my moments. And those all are some right. pretty good moments, yeah, I feel like. I like them. Combined. Working. Yeah. Um, well, we also did a video for his channel, guys, so make sure you go and check that out as well. But thank you, Ash, for being here, and thank you for contacting me to do a collab. I hope more in the future. Yeah, I would love to. Uh, my pleasure. And uh, yeah, let's let's get let's get let's get to the uh, band back together again here in the uh, in the near future. Uh, because I always love talking a little bit of raid with you. Good times. Awesome. Well, thank you again, and um, catch everybody on the next video.